Kevin, just hopping off of what Rick was saying, how, how good of a tell is, uh, our, is the 10 year yield right now? Well, it's the go to that and gold would be the go to defensive assets for anything that would be unsettling to the market in the short term. So this coronavirus scare, uh, it's the easy trade for the time being. But the next two or three weeks are going to be very telling to see whether this is uh, going to go the way of SARS, because uh, ultimately that was a relatively short lived kind of thing. Uh, as opposed to something much worse. Uh, 1918 was a very difficult si situation with the Spanish flu. That resulted in a 30 percent decline in the Dow. So overall, the market is still trying to ferret out whether this is something that is, uh, is ramping up to something more troubling or whether it's something that will be able to be taken a little bit more in, in stride as right. public health officials begin to get their hands around it. Well, and to that point, Chris, uh, we just heard on that CDC telebriefing, 110 being monitored as possible cases, 26 states. Uh, but the spread is not happening within the community of the United States. And for that reason, they say public health risk at the time being is considered low. How heartening is that? I think it's encouraging as long as your viewers accept the fact that we are going to see more cases in the United States. I anticipate we'll probably have 10 to 20 cases by the end of the week in the U.S. And in China, really, you're probably looking at 10 times the number of cases that have been publicly reported. So what I'm telling my clients is that if you're, you're underappreciating how bad this can be in China and you're overappreciating uh, how impactful this is going to be in the U.S., U.S., probably not a big deal. China, way worse than what people are anticipating. So, Kevin, uh, is it is it does it make sense to punish stocks with China exposure? Because it, it seems like some of that is what's happening here. I'm looking at some stocks that are down less so far today. Amazon, IBM, Microsoft, for example, among sizable stocks uh, that are down uh, on the lower side. Apple's down quite a bit more. It's got 42 retail stores in, in mainland China. Does, does that make sense? I really like the way that, that Rick set this up because a lot of the move in the market in the last year, especially with the higher uh, volatility, higher, higher beta uh, sectors, the more economically sensitive sectors, those have run very fast and uh, ahead of underlying earnings growth. So to any extent that the narrative, uh, the popular net bull narrative today, which is that the stock market is forecasting an upturn in the global economy. We're just waiting to see that happen. Anything that would upset that narrative from unfolding would be a negative. So, yes, anything that has had a big run that is tied to global, uh, global travel, global growth, China, you would expect to see them pull back, particularly given that they've had such a good run and, it's, and it is uh, rational, given some new uncertain information, to take to mark down those prices just a bit. But uh, so far, the, the gains are still very hardy when you look at them year over year. Chris, you mentioned the asymmetry and severity uh, regarding the virus in China versus the United States. Uh, how does that how do we maintain that asymmetry without extreme travel restrictions coming into the United States from China? Well, the good news is, as someone who's worked at the Department of Health and Human Services in the area of public health emergencies, I can tell you that through from the leadership of Secretary Azar all the way through the Centers for Disease Control, the U.S. is the global leader in infectious disease detection and response. We've got great local public health departments that are tracking the people coming in and looking at who they've impacted. So our public health setup is really encouraging. I think we probably will see the transmission of some case from human to human inside the United States. But even if that happens, it doesn't mean it's a huge issue. It doesn't mean the market should be heavily concerned about this. So from my perspective, we're in a good shape. The U.S. is the global leader. The impact on China is going to be weeks or months, not days. And in the U.S., this is going to continue to be a story for the next little while. Kevin, given that valuations in the market in general uh, are where they are, pretty high and, and that this is a global issue. Um, one might argue that stocks have not fallen that much. Uh, what does that say about investors' mentality? Well, it says that investors have placed a relatively large bet on this, the 2019 global slowdown turning around and 
start, starting to show some, some momentum here. And when you go and you look at the manufacturing data around the world, when you look at purchasing managers indexes uh, representing the more cyclical parts of the global economy, it does look like things have settled down a little bit in terms of the decline in growth. It looks like things may be starting to pick up. And so what we want to see is we want to see that momentum build as the year goes on. The market has priced in an expectation for a turn to positive growth and a pickup in earnings growth, starting to see it. And hopefully this, uh, this coronavirus turns out to be something that uh, does not really threaten what seems to be an emerging positive growth story for 2020. Finally, Kevin, I wonder whether you think earnings season so far and uh, the qualitative commentary about 2020 uh, supports, ratifies, confirms the expectation for a inflection in growth uh, post uh, phase one, so far at least. Yeah, well, a little bit. When you take all the data and put it together, including what we're hearing on the er on earnings calls, there is some sense that we might actually get some some lift in growth, top line, and earnings. Uh, the challenge, of course, is going to be that profit margins, generally speaking, are also elevated. So it has to really be uh, a, a more solid global growth picture. And the trade deal has been helpful at getting at least the forward view looking a little bit better. So to the extent that we see some pickup in top line growth, uh, that should support some gain in earnings. And that could help feed a bullish case as we move our way through the first half of the year. But you really need to see it not only in this quarter, but you need to see a continuation of that theme next quarter, too.